Hey guys, today we are overclocking the Celeron 420. We looked at this processor in a recent video and most of you know that overclocking isn't really my thing and I usually get accommodated too, but with the Celeron 420, I got a lot of comments asking to look into overclocking. So today the Celeron 420, which cost only $39 at launch, is once again going up against the highest clocked Pentium 4, running at 3.8 GHz. So let's find out what this chip can do once we crank up the clock speed. The Celeron 420 has a clock speed of 1.6 GHz, 800 MHz frontside bus. We're dealing with a 35 watt TDP, so this is a very low power consumption processor. And we have 512 kilobytes of level 2 cache. So let's have a look at stock performance and see what happened. We can see the green bar, that's the Pentium 4 3.8 GHz without hyperthreading. The blue bar has hyperthreading enabled. And yellow is our Celeron 420. And in 3D Mark, we can see it's behind the Pentium 4. With the games, uh, we have uh, less games now. And I also just picked the 1024 by 768 resolution because we saw very little difference in resolutions. In Far Cry, we can see hyperthreading making a little bit of an impact. Uh, and the Pentium 4 is ahead of the Celeron. In Dune 3, we saw that the Celeron really struggled, only 35 FPS, and hyperthreading made quite an impact. And here we have Fear with maximum details. Once again, the Celeron is behind the Pentium 4. So the first step in overclocking for me was getting the front side bus to 266 megahertz. You just enter the bias. Make sure you press Control F1. We have a gigabyte bias that unlocks a few settings in the BIOS. Now overclocking the front side bus also raised the clock speed of the RAM to 1066. The memory we're using can run 1066 megahertz at 55515 timings, but needs extra voltage and you have to dial in the timings manually. And here we have the results in 3D Mark 2001. The Celeron is already faster than the Pentium 4. In 2003, it's just a little bit behind. Let's have a look at Far Cry and yes, 71 FPS. It's already beating out the Pentium 4, even with hyperthreading enabled. Let's have a look at Doom 3, 47 FPS. So it's still behind uh, the Pentium 4 in that game. Doom 3 seems to be maybe more uh, cache sensitive or something like that. And what can we see in fear? 129 FPS, look at that, already outperforming the Pentium 4. So the next step was raising the front side bus to 333 megahertz. This will now overclock the RAM well beyond 1066 megahertz. So I just had to lower the multiplier for the RAM and we're good to go. So now we can see in 3D Mark our Celeron 420 is beating the Pentium 4 regardless of hyperthreading enabled or turned off. Moving on to Far Cry 82 FPS, that's another a nice little boost. Let's have a look at Doom 3. Can we finally beat the Pentium 4? So we're getting 56 FPS. So it's now beating the Pentium 4 with hyperthreading turned off, but with hyperthreading enabled, the Pentium 4 is still a tiny bit faster, but we are slowly getting there. And in fear, 129 FPS is now quite a bit faster than the Pentium 4. And finally, I tried 400 megahertz, which also worked fine. Keep in mind, I actually didn't have to change any other settings. I believe the gigabyte board automatically overvolts the processor. So I just had to raise the front side bus and once again, lower the RAM multiplier. And here we have got the 3D Mark results. And look at that in 2001, I see almost 34,000 points. And in 2003, almost 48,000 points. So that's now uh, a nice uh, lead over the Pentium 4. Here we have Far Cry, 90 FPS. In Doom 3, we are now smashing the Pentium 4, 62 FPS. So we're even beating the Pentium 4 uh, with hyperthreading and we got almost a 10 FPS lead over the Pentium 4 without hyperthreading, which is amazing. Remember the Celeron doesn't have any hyperthreading, it just has one single core. And in Fear, 143 FPS also well ahead of the Pentium 4. I also had a look at the power meter and under load with the video card uh, being fully loaded between 120 and 130 watts. So that is uh, not much at all. And yeah, I think it's time to wrap up this video guys. So $39 processor and we got a really nice performance boost. Now, 
I still can't recommend uh, going for a Celeron because the Core 2 chips are even faster, they can probably overclock further and they cost just a few dollars depending on which model you go for on eBay. But it was a fun experiment and a look back at what overclocking was all about back in the days uh, before manufacturers locked everything down and you had to get black edition processors or K processors or extreme editions and yeah go for a much more expensive model. We got a few uh, cheaper ones like the Pentium Anniversary Edition but that was just a dual core processor so it's not the same thing as back in the day where you could get a really cheap part overclock it and uh, end up with something that can match a more expensive product. So guys, there you have it. That was my very first 100% overclock. We took the Celeron 420 and just by raising the front side bus and lowering the RAM multiplier without doing anything else, it overclocked from 1.6 to 3.2 gigahertz. And games such as uh, Far Cry, you've seen it in the uh, video, is running now just fine. And there you have it guys, we overclocked the Celeron 420 from 1.6 to 3.2 gigahertz. Thanks for all the comments on the previous uh, video and let me know what was your best overclock. Uh, were you able to get 100% overclock as well? I'm not quite sure if all chips overclock like this, but really I had no issue. Also perfect stability. So yeah, this could not have gone any smoother. So thank you for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.